Hi, and welcome to Nice Size Science Learning Series. I'm Jenny. And I'm Sophie. Jenny and I are science instructors at the New York Hall of Science. Hey Sophie, do you remember what we talked about last week? Yes, I remember we dropped a lot of stuff and, oops. And we found out that objects dropped on Earth will always fall down to Earth because they're attracted by Earth's gravity. That's right. Gravity is so powerful that it holds our atmosphere in place and it keeps the moon above us. And also, it's so powerful that no human being has been able to leave this Earth's atmosphere. Well, hang on. That's not exactly true. Human beings are actually quite ingenious, and they've invented all kinds of cool modes of transportation that have allowed them to leave Earth's surface and defy gravity. Today, we're going to explore a special mode of transportation called the rocket ship. Join us in this 15 minute video as we create and design rockets and we will explore how humans can defy gravity. Let's talk a moment about motion and what motion is. Motion is when an object changes its position, its place, or is moving. Now, what does that mean? Well, take for example this tennis ball. I'm going to place it in my hand. Right now, it's in the same position, not moving, not going anywhere, and not changing places. But when I throw this up and catch it, it changes its position and is in motion. There are some laws that talk about how motion works, and the laws that we're going to talk about today are Newton's Laws of Motion, named after Sir Isaac Newton. The first law states that an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by other forces. This means that if you throw a ball, it should stay soaring through the air forever. The reason it doesn't do that is because of other forces such as gravity and air resistance which slow the ball and drag it back down. The second law states that the greater the mass of an object, the more force needed to accelerate it. Basically, this is saying that if you want to throw a big heavy object like a rock, you'll need a lot more energy and force than you would if you were throwing a small light object. Newton's third law states every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Now, what does that mean? Well, we're going to show that with a balloon demonstration. So here I have a balloon and what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow some air into it and we're going to test it out. So here I have my balloon. You didn't see me blow air into this. So here it is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it go and we're going to see what will happen. But before I let it go, it's hypothesis time. What do you think will happen if I let go of this balloon? Well, I'm going to show you a clip of me letting this balloon go so you can see what happens to the balloon. Here I have my balloon. What I'm going to do is let it go. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. The air is leaving out the balloon, which is the action, and the reaction is the balloon moving forward. So why is it important to know all of this? Well, if we're thinking about taking a rocket, which is really large and heavy, we have to think about how we're going to get it out of this Earth's atmosphere by using motion and force. Once our rocket is out of Earth's atmosphere, then we have to think about how we're going to navigate our rocket and fly it to our destination in space. Hmm. But even before we could get that far, how do we get it up there? Well, we're going to figure this out together. Let's return to that question. If gravity is so powerful, then how do we get in outer space? Gravity is powerful, but not so powerful that we can't circumvent it. You can utilize other forces to defy gravity's pull. The way rocket ships defy gravity is simply by using a lot of power. 
In fact, when we went to the moon in 1969, NASA sent Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins into space with 4,578,000 pounds of fuel. It is so much, but it's necessary in order for the rocket to get enough thrust. Thrust is created by the propulsion system, which uses Newton's third law. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction to achieve liftoff. As the rocket fuel is burned up inside the propulsion system, it creates gas that comes out and starts to push against the ground. Since there's nowhere for that gas to go except for the ground, which will not move, it pushes so hard that it starts to lift the rocket ship up all the way into outer space. Since we can't get access to jet fuel and real rocket engines, real bummer. We're gonna start by making smaller paper rockets a day powered by your own breath. For this activity, you will need the following supplies. Straw, tape, scissors, and a piece of paper. Pause here if you need time to gather those things. First, take your piece of paper and cut out a long rectangle shape. Wrap the rectangle around the straw and then tape it closed to create a tube. Slide the tube off the straw and begin squishing one end of the tube flat. This is gonna be your rocket's nose cone. Tape it shut. Test the seal on your nose cone by putting the tube back on the straw and blowing air into the straw. If the tube does not launch from the straw, check to make sure there's no air escaping out the top. If there is, just add more tape. Now cut two small triangle shapes out from the sheet of paper. Tape these to your rocket tube. These are your fins. Check your rocket one more time. If it launches off the straw without a hitch, you're ready to head to the launch pad. Hypothesis time. What do you think will happen when you blow into the straw? What will your rocket ship do? How far will it go? Think about the answers to these questions before you start the experiment. Once you have a working rocket ship, come with me to the launch pad. Find the longest room that you can. A hallway would be great, but really any room in your home is fine. Pick one side of the room and mark a spot to stand from with tape, a book, or any other kind of marker you can find. This will be your launch pad. Next, set up a way to measure how far your aircraft will travel. If you have measuring tape, this can be as simple as just laying out the tape across the room. You can also put a strip of masking tape down and use a ruler or yardstick to mark accurate measurements on the tape. You can use whichever unit, inches or centimeters, you prefer, as long as you use the same one all throughout. If you don't have any measuring tools handy, don't fret. As long as all your measurements are done the same way throughout the experiments, they don't have to be exact. You can always use your feet to measure distance putting one foot in front of the other, and then counting how many steps it took to get from the launch pad to your downed aircraft. In fact, this is actually where the foot unit of measurement comes from. However you end up measuring, just keep it consistent and note which method and unit you used. Stand on your launch pad, bring your straw to your lips, and aim the rocket out towards your measuring tape. Blow into the straw and watch your rocket soar. Find where it lands, measure how far it went from the launch pad, and record that in your worksheet. Repeat this process twice more for a total of three measurements. Just like we talked about real rocket ships, your paper rocket uses Newton's third law too. When you blow your air into the straw, the air pushes against the rocket, and the rocket pushes back against the air. However, since there's nowhere else for the air to go, it ends up making your rocket lift off and launch across the room. So we've experimented with propelling our rockets forward using thrust. And now we're going to add more power and create stomp rockets today. Hmm, I wonder what we can use for our stomp rockets. 
oh, we could use a juice pouch. So I'm going to show you how we can use a juice pouch to make a stomp rocket today. Pause here to gather these supplies. You will need a juice pouch, tape, a scissor, pencil, and a straw. First, you're going to take your juice pouch and take the straw out of it. Then you're going to take your pencil and make the hole bigger by putting the pencil through the hole. After you put the pencil through, take your scissor and make the hole a little bit bigger. Now you're going to take your straw. You can make sure to cut your straw in half and then place your straw into the Capri Sun pouch. I have duct tape here. And I have packing tape, so you can use any of the tapes. But for this video, I'm going to use the packing tape. So I'm going to take a piece of tape and I'm going to tape it on the Capri Sun to make sure that no air escapes. And I'm going to puff some air to make it easier for me to see how I can seal the Capri Sun pouch. I'm going to take another piece of tape and cover the back of the Capri Sun. I'm going to fold the tape over the top and that's it. That's how you make a stomp rocket. It's hypothesis time. How do you think your rocket will launch with the stomp rocket compared to the straw rockets you did earlier today? Hmm. So once you have your stomp rocket and you stomped on it, it's all flat, but you're going to have to make sure you put air into it. So the way you're going to put air into it is you're going to blow through the straw to put air into it, just like this. Once you inflate your stomp rocket, you're going to take your rocket and place it on the straw. Now you're ready to launch. Three, two, one, blast off. Three, two, one, blast off! Make sure to launch three times and write down your results. You must be wondering how does our stomp rocket work? Just like the straw rockets, Newton's third law is happening. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. The paper rocket is placed on a straw connected to a juice pouch. When you stomp on the juice pouch, air rushes through the straw and fills the body of the rocket. The air pushes against the straw until the rocket pops off. The air escapes out the back of the rocket because it has nowhere else to go and this propels the rocket forward. The question is, which has more power? The stomp rocket launcher or using the straw to launch your rocket? You will have to write down your measurements and see the results of the experiment. Wow, that was a blast. You can try to change the angle of your stomp rocket to see if that changes how your rocket launches. Or you can also change the design of your rocket and see if that helps your rocket launch further away. Thank you for spending time with us learning all about rockets and how they defy gravity. You've got to explore how Newton's laws of motion help us lift off. And how you use aerodynamics and forces like thrust and propulsion to move through space. Hope you had a blast with all these out of these world experiments. See you next time.